Don't you hate when your twin brother is trying to hack into your computer? Yeah, I used to have this problem until LastPass came in sponsoring this portion of this video. <laughs> Go away, Bethaniel. LastPass relieves the burden of remembering passwords. Stop getting locked out of your accounts and let LastPass fill in your usernames and passwords for you. With LastPass, you don't have to write, remember, or reset passwords. They allow you to keep track of them easily so you can stay sane. Put your passwords on autopilot since LastPass autofills your credentials even on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. When you open an app or site, LastPass will fill in your username and password, making it fast and easy to log in. And it's even got unlimited password storage. What more could you possibly want? And the best part? You can try LastPass for free right now, and it even includes a free 30-day trial of premium. So if you'd like to support this channel, go check out the first link in the description. And again, a huge thank you to LastPass for sponsoring this portion of this video. But now, it's time to get back to it. While the new Super Mario Bros. games are very similar to one another, there's actually a good variety in their bosses, so today, we're gonna be ranking them all. This will be based off how creative they are, as well as how fun they can be to fight. So with that, let's get her ranked! 41. Boom Boom He's just as easy as he was in Mario Bros. 3. Simply stomp on his head three times and you win. His method of attacking is swinging his arms and jumping. That's it. Sometimes Magikoopa will have him grow in size or let him fly, but even then, he's so vulnerable. It takes next to no effort to smack his head in succession because Boom Boom is so slow. 40. Bowser DS I know this game is celebrating the classic Mario titles, but they made no substantial improvements with the Bowser fight. You can destroy him with fireballs, or just jump right over him. We might as well mash the final Bowser fight with this one, because the only real difference is that Bowser Jr. fights along his dad. And even then, you can just run underneath Bowser and still win pretty easily. 39. Dry Bowser DS It's exactly the same as the normal Bowser fight, but now you can't knock him out with fireballs and he throws bones. That barely makes it harder, but it's worth mentioning anyway. 38. Resnor The nod to Super Mario World is pretty cool, but did Resnor really need to be the mid-boss every single time here? Again, there's next to no challenge. You stand on the ground or ferris wheel and jump underneath to knock them out. Now there is other variants of him that don't have the floor, which is a little harder, or the ferris wheel is larger, but even then, there's nothing to sweat over. 37. Roy Koopa 2 Here comes the onslaught of Koopalings, with the worst being Roy in New Mario Bros. 2. His main attack is the worst attempt at tackling I've ever seen in my life. He's so bad that he gets stunned by ramming himself into the wall. That's just pathetic. Roy also shoots magical flame balls that are really easy to avoid. 36. Larry Koopa Wii So this fella shoots flame balls like Roy, but the stage has gaps on the sides and Larry also jumps. Those are his two attacks, and they're a joke. You're not gonna have any trouble taking him out. The second fight has a bunch of pillars moving up and down, but it's still pretty painless. 35. Larry Koopa 2 It's basically the same fight, but the stage has two pillars that randomly rise up and down on top of additional platforms. This makes everything a little more interesting, but not by much. These two battles could be interchangeable. Changed, honestly. 34. Bowser Jr. DS That's right, Bowser's son is actually a better boss, but that's not saying much. It should be noted that you can annihilate him with fireballs before he even comes close to you. But if you don't have Fire Mario, then he either runs from side to side, cowers in his shell when you get close, jumps, or throws green shells which you can knock right back at him. So at least there is a progression of difficulty, but it's really not much. 33. Morton Koopa 2 The big lad stands on a platform and creates giant spike balls. The only problem is that he takes three centuries to do this, and you're given plenty of time to smack his head and easily avoid his projectiles. When Morton returns after getting hit, his slam can stun Mario, but that doesn't matter because he takes too long to get a spike again anyway. 32. Lemmy Koopa 2 Instead of a deadly fireball or spike, Lemmy shoots bouncy balls that you can bounce off to help hit him. Now granted, these balls can knock you off the stage, but their patterns are very predictable, and they're bouncy balls. The only true obstacle here is the conveyor belt floor. There's a switch up top to flip it in Lemmy's direction, but you don't even need to bother doing that since the conveyor belts move so slowly. 31. Lemmy Koopa U This is somewhat similar to the previous Lemmy fight, but now he throws bombs. Wow, an actual attack? 
back. It doesn't really matter though, since there's no longer holes in the floor, and he remains stationary making him very easy to hit. Really, these two fights could be interchanged based on preference. 30. Lemmy Koopa Wii The first fight is the easiest and most boring, but the second one makes the Wii version of Lemmy the most interesting and challenging. Magikoopa makes Lemmy's ball huge, and the floor is slippery with holes in the sides, so that means that you pretty much have to bounce off the balls to hit them. It's nice that we have to put some effort in, unless you've got the propeller suit on, of course. 29. Mega Goomba I'm kinda surprised they didn't just use Goombas here, but either way, this is a cool take on fighting a Goomba. You'll hit the switch to make these green platforms appear. Here. Standing on them makes them go up, and you have to ground pound the Goomba for the hit to count. While this is a neat idea, it is stupid easy to do, and you don't even need these platforms since wall jumping gets you the same amount of height. 28. Boss Sumo Bro You'll take on a giant Sumo Bro, which seems intimidating, but he really isn't. His stomp spews a wave of electricity, which can be tricky to avoid if you aren't careful, but once you hit him one time, you've basically already won. Now at least he gets up faster than Boom Boom, but you're given a lot of time to knock him back down without any chance of him attacking again. 27. Ludwig von Koopa 2 So we've got an interesting twist here. Mario has to take a pipe and shoot himself up to knock Ludwig off the chains. Then, he can finally get a chance to jump on Ludwig. It's not really challenging, but I do appreciate that it's a little different and uses a type of pipe that we almost never see. 26. PD Piranha What's funny is that PD can fly just like he does in Mario Sunshine, but without the puking attack. The battle is actually a little disappointing because the plant kind of just dives down at you, misses, and then is stunned afterwards. Sometimes he'll get up quickly from a fall, but usually you're golden and won't have much problem with this fight. 25. Roy Koopa U Thankfully, his fight is much more interesting than the 3DS version. He shoots bullet bills and some platforms spawn in. The only hard part is hitting him initially. You basically have to wait until he goes up top. After that, you can pretty easily chain hit him, since he takes a while to respawn the platforms. 24. Roy Koopa Wii Your first battle with him is nothing special. He just slams the ground hard and then you slam his head harder. The second battle, however, introduces these pipes, and Roy will randomly fly out of one, making it hard to predict where he's gonna land. It's an interesting take and keeps you on your toes. 23. Larry Koopa U This Mohawk gamer is still throwing fireballs and stuff, but now we have to deal with giant geysers of water. When Larry spins around with these on, it makes it very hard to track where he's gonna end up, and it's just really fun hopping around in this setting. 22. Morton Koopa Wii The first battle has you dealing with a smaller stage and spikes on the sides. It's already more interesting than most koopa Link fights, but then the second fight is surprisingly worse. Morton ground pounds and the pillars surrounding him rise up temporarily. This isn't really challenging or fun, it just feels like a waiting game. But overall, Morton has some decent fights in the Wii version. 21. Mummy Pokey It's a Pokey, but mummified and can shoot spider balls at you. He quickly digs himself in and out of the ground to attack, but it's easier than you would think. Despite having a small head as a target, you see mounds of sand pile up before he comes out, giving you ample time to hit him. Still though, it's a pretty fun boss to tackle. 20. Wendy O Koopa 2 So instead of using the iconic rings, Wendy raises the water up and... just jumps? Okay, I mean there's also cheap cheeps coming out of the pipes, but I have to wonder if her wand is just broken or something. Since this is water based, it is a neat way to fight her, but it's just strange that she doesn't use the rings at all. 19. Lucky Thunder You know, I've gotta ask, why doesn't Bowser hire a bunch of these guys and get rid of Lekitu? He shoots freaking lightning out of his cloud for crying out loud, on top of throwing spinies and wearing the stickest pair of shades I've ever seen. Despite how awesome this boss is, he's a bit on the easy side. When he swoops down to hit you, it's fairly easy to jump on him, and you probably won't get hit by his attacks. 18. Iggy Koopa U So Iggy shoots lots of flames and runs from pipe to pipe and can somehow stand on the ceiling. So not only do you have to deal with that, but Shardvar pops out of the lava to cause trouble too. This is another rare Koopaling fight where I sometimes struggle with it because of how many obstacles are in the way. 17. Morton Koopa U So instead of using spikes, a giant pokey flies out of the ground and Morton swings his hammer for a hole in one. And you can't use fireballs to take these out either, so you have to wait for the wall of pokey to settle down before before jumping on him. While this is a novel concept, he moves too slowly for this to really be too difficult. 16. Iggy Koopa 2 And it's not just him, he's joined by a giant chain chomp that chases us around the stage. The chomp is a bit slow and is easy to read, but it's still a really unique battle. If he didn't move in increments, I'd say this would be a lot more intense. 
15, Iggy Koopa Wii. The first fight is nothing special, with just some platforms that move up and down. But the second one is essentially the same from New Super Mario Bros. 2, but the level is more enclosed. You have less room to move, and on the last hit, the chomp gets faster. 14, Wendy O. Koopa U. So she's actually using her rings, but they're only to activate the giant icicles that crash down on the stage. This one can be tricky, simply because Wendy moves fast, and the whole level is on ice, and you gotta love that she's got her own pair of rollerblades for the occasion too. 13, Cheap Skipper. This is Big Bertha, but gone wild. Cheap Skipper swims back and forth and will randomly flop up top to snag a hit off you. While dealing with this, there's also random Cheap Cheeps that fly out to make your scenario more challenging. This fish will fly at you fast and you really gotta be careful of your spacing or you'll get knocked up. This one may take a few tries to get used to. 12, Ludwig von Koopa U. The one tooth magician soars into the air and then splits into three. The clones all shoot fire at you and come down one at a time, with a goal of course is to find the real Ludwig. It requires you to react fast, and this is one of the few Koopaling bosses that can be hard to chain attack because he gets up so quickly after spinning in his shell. 11. Magic Koopa Wii. We've seen him enhance the Koopaling's powers plenty of times, and now we're fighting him once and for all. The big gimmick here is Magic Koopa makes the stage scroll, which is actually really cool. Then he teleports around and shoots beams of death, which when they collide with the stage, it disintegrates. It takes some time to find the right place to stop Magic Koopa as he always seems to get out of the way at just the right time. 10. Magic Koopa U. This has similar vibes to the other Magic Koopa battle, except he creates the stage this time and still destroys it with his beams of death. The added layer of having less room and the donut blocks appearing on the bottom makes this one feel pretty frantic, and that's only a good thing. 9. Monty Tank. We're diving into war territory with Monty and his tank. He throws the bombs at us and bullet bills are fired as well. After each hit, the tank gets taller and taller, making it harder and harder to hit Monty. I love the sense of progression with this one, and you have to be creative for that last hit by bouncing off a bullet bill to reach the top. 8. Wendy O. Koopa Wii. Finally, after all this time, Wendy uses her rings of power in the first fight, but they're way slower than in Mario Bros. 3 and even disappear after a bit. But then the second fight makes up for all that when the water rises up, so now you gotta worry about the rings, her jumping at you, and the water all at the same time. It is a lot to deal with, and that's what makes it so satisfying. 7. Bowser U. This starts like the DS version, where you simply have to hit the switch behind Bowser. After that, you'll run up some stairs and find Peach in a castle, but surprise, surprise, Bowser comes back as freaking Godzilla! So now you have to lure Bowser Jr. down to you, knock him out of the clown car, then fly up and smash the car into Bowser's head. Do this three times and you win. It's a fun way to finish, although this is like the fifth time Bowser has grown giant for the epic finale. 6. Ludwig von Koopa Wii. This is by far the most interesting and fun Koopaling fight. You're rushing up a castle on these three little platforms and have to defeat Ludwig. This feels very action-packed, and it can be difficult too. There's a real sense of a rush trying to stay alive while defeating the Koopaling. 5. Bowser Jr. U. The clown car finally got what it needed, a pair of arms. Jr. throws the bombs and either rapid fire punches or goes for a snipe punch. When he misses the snipe, you can climb up the arm and sock Jr. in the face. You constantly have to be on the move for this one by throwing the bombs out of the way, making sure the ground doesn't get too torn up, and avoiding the fists of fury. 4. Bowser 2. Like the Wii U version, you fight normal Bowser by hitting the switch, and then he grows into a big, big boy. This variant is a lot better though because the floor is rising lava and all you can stand on are a few platforms that float up above. To make matters worse, Bowser swipes down and destroys the platforms. And when you get higher up, Bowser statues start spewing fireballs making the action even more intense. It's really impressive that a boss like this was put onto a handheld. 3. Dry Bowser 2 There's really not much to add as this boss is almost the same besides a couple differences. 1. Fireballs don't hurt Dry Bowser as you'd expect. 2. Some of the platforms are tinier. In 3. Dry Bowser straight up looks cooler. 2. Bowser Jr. Wii There's actually a lot of creative battles in this version. The first requiring us to pick up a propeller block and snipe him from above. Next, you take hold of your own clown car and plow Bowser Jr. into electricity, and finally he throws giant spike bombs at you so 
so you have to ground pound it back up and hit him. All three of these fights are extremely fun and varied. I really wish that the other Koopalings did crazy stuff like this instead. And one is Bowser for the Wii. Boiling it down, it is the same formula of fighting small Bowser and then a giant one, but holy crap did they get creative. The game tricks you into thinking the room you're in is small, but then the camera pans out and it's actually an entire level, and you gotta get through it before Bowser burns you to smithereens. You basically want to stand in front of walls so Bowser will breathe fire in that direction and open the path up. And this is a long fight. By the end, the pace picks up with lava waves and lots of narrow pathways to squeeze through. It's without a doubt one of Bowser's greatest battles. You know, I never realized how different some of the Koopaling fights were until I made this video. There's actually more variety than I would have expected. But with that, let me know down below what you think the best bosses are and why. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Until next time.